Hi, I'm Ludwig Gorenson and this is The Breakdown. I got a call that uh, Mr. Nolan wanted to meet me and uh, I, was, I had no real idea what it was about, um, but obviously he's, you know, one of, one of the director that's, you know, inspired me the most through, through my life and, and also his collaboration with with Zimmer is been groundbreaking, you know, what, what they've been doing with, with cinema and how they've been together pushing visuals and music. And I mean, I saw, I think Batman Begins when I was 19 or 18 in, in Sweden in the, in the movie theater and was just mind blown when I saw that movie. I was, and also because I, I never heard a score in a blockbuster, like having such much, so much room and really feeling like a character of the movie. And, so I was, I was, I, I left that whole experience just, uh, yeah. I think I was like really determined at the time after I saw the movie, I was like, I want to, I want to be able to do this. I want to, I want to get in on this. So he, I got the call that he wanted to meet and, and, and I drove up to his studio and, uh, we had our first meeting in his, uh, in his library or studio library. And we were just sitting there, um, listening to music. We were, he was. I think it was like six hours. We were just listening to music. He played me a bunch of music from his kind of the soundtrack to his life and, and music that inspired him. And and I played him music that inspired me and that that, that had a great meaning for, for my life, to my life. And, and and we just kind of bonded like that. Um, and then by the end, after six hours, he was like, hey, do you want to come back tomorrow and, and read the script for my new project? And I was like, sure, yeah, <laughs> I'd love to. Uh, and that was Tenet. I thought it was going to be more, I mean, I did have to go to a destination to read the script. I had to go to an office, close the door. I was, I was, there was a table with the script on, uh, and I read it in one sitting, probably four or five hours. Um, and then we had a meeting right afterwards and I got to ask Chris, a bunch of questions and I had also from reading the script I like immediately I knew that this is a world and an experience for 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 the audience and even as I'm reading it it's a conspiracy it's an, it's an experience that I've never uh, had before and I knew the audience was in for the same ride so I immediately knew that we, Chris and I have to create a total unique sound world that that is going to be jarring <laughs> and uh uh, it's gonna be new and different and a shock for, for because it's 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 an emotion an experience that you never had before. I was a little bit surprised how savvy he is in. I mean, I know obviously that he knows a lot about music, but I he's so interested in every detail of filmmaking, in every detail of the music making. So, you know, I was I was I was I was just blabbing on about like you know side chaining and and you know metric modulations and 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 he was all he was he was really engaged when I was talking about that kind of stuff and it, and he kind of pushed it, that conversation further so I knew that okay well this is going to be fun but like we're going to be able to experiment here um and uh so the next step he asked me to go uh start writing music and I went back to my studio and he asked me to come back like two weeks later um and I went to my studio, I started writing. Uh, I wrote about, I wrote one track, it was about 12 minutes long. And then two weeks later, I went back to his uh, studio and we, I, I actually had to burn it on a CD because he used the CD players. So I had to like go find, like one of those, like a CD marker pen and, and burnable CDs. And so I, I came to the studio with a CD and we put it in and he just turned it up to like, you know, 11 and it was so loud at one point in my first demo I had this like really heavy sidechain beat that is that actually eventually became the the Travis Scott song the plan uh, and I remember when that beat kicked in like this the whole house was kind of shaking and I was looking at him and it was just I don't know I think he was I think he he definitely was excited about about, about that music and and we played it over and over again, five, five, six times. And after that, we kind of just 
that um, he's we sat down and dissected the whole 12 minute piece like what instruments he likes what little phrase he likes and, and what chord progressions is interesting and where we can push things further um and we met up every other week uh, uh, with uh, and i was writing new demos and, and taking ideas further and further and this was about three months before they had shot anything so uh so when he, when they finally took off to shoot in 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 uh, Tallinn, I think was the first destination. He already had like five six CDs with my music on it. There's a lot of guitars. There's a lot of synths. There's a lot, but there's also a lot of organic instruments. That, and and but everything is also very heavily manipulated and very heavily um, dera derailed and ranged. So. I think the sound and it's also very blended together with the sound design so so what's interesting about this is i think when you know when, when people go to see a movie today you're already expecting to hear a certain sound you already you're already as an audience member is expect to hear a certain blend of electronics and the cinematic orchestra you know and for this one uh chris really turn turn it on its head and and you know it, the music and the sound is so heavily manipulated like that i am and you i manipulated the organic elements and i manipulated that that uh the uh synth and and tech elements so most of the times you can't really tell what's what and f for the ear that's very jarring and sh and can be shocking to a lot of people because you, you're trying to hear things you're trying to put your finger on what it is but but can't there's a lot of hidden um, music messages in the score and there's a lot of thought put into exactly when things are played backwards and also how they're played backwards because there's so many different ways to play something backwards you know Bach played he wrote music he he, he was he wrote inverted music you know he there's a the famous piece called crab cannon that you play and then you play down to the page and then you play from the bottom up up so it's you know it's basically um, a, an inverted piece of music but when you listen to someone performing that it doesn't sound like it doesn't sound like it's reversed you know and I'm inter I was interested in both aspects of it like how can you keep that tradition with writing the inverted melodies but then also in the modern tr uh, tradition where, where where you actually he hear music and it's actually sounds reversed and what and then another thing that's interesting what if it sounds reversed but it's actually the real forward playing melody um and there's a bunch of that going on in in the score and then and, and i had to i had to figure out completely new ways of of recording and and recording musicians and re recording techniques and and it was a lot of experimentation and um but it was so so fun and, and i learned so much um by by doing all of this what was really important to me and what was from the get-go is was is was for the music to enhance the story and i wanted to make you know i want you like i want you to be able to listen to the music just by itself and follow exactly what's going on in the movie and i, I wanted them and we wanted the, the the action of the music to really follow the storyline of 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 the action on screen and you know there's there's uh there's that scene in the movie where he becomes inverted and he steps in a puddle of there's there's like a puddle of water that he steps in and you see the water going up to his shoe before he steps in the in the puddle of water that's when i saw that i was like that's how i want the music to sound like like how that vision is how that visual is they actually premiered the prologue in front of I think it was in front of Star Wars uh, on IMAX screenings last uh, last year and so we had to finish this scene and this uh, piece of music before the rest of the movie and this was also one of the early demos that I wrote for Chris he was like can you write can you start writing on some action ideas and I wrote this piece of music that eventually became rainy night in Tallinn. so what's the first thing that the the tenant starts with is with an orchestra tuning up and 
what's interesting is that the orchestra tuning up is it's an actually that's the one that, that we recorded that in LA with the with the that lay musicians there with the orchestra tuning up but there's also some some soft uneasy synths going on in the background so it immediately puts the audience in as in in the chair where they're like is this part of the score is this part of them just tuning up or like where am i it's it's such a because it's also such a sound that you're you're so used to hearing and it's it's but it's it, it's a little uncomfortable you can kind of get a sense that something is about to happen because you also cut you know to these guys sitting in a car um so something's going on and then these terrorists comes in um and you have these big hits coming and what that is is it's actually guitars um it's three uh three guitars um playing a very low note i think i played my eight string guitar in the back uh and they're playing a low note and then i pitched it down um uh, so this is just how the guitar sounds like i put some distortion and some reverb on them um and uh then I started with this synth, this little arpeggio. And it's like this whole thing, this whole synth and arpeggio is filtered throughout the whole so it's like it's it's it feels like something is coming. You know, it's 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 it's, it's a old way of using um Jaws, but it, but it, you it, you get the sense of danger coming for you, <laughs> and and when I did this arpeggio, um, I, I created a synth arpeggio. I, I, something that that made you know i'm always like okay well this is not good this is not interesting enough like how can i make this more interesting and because and so, so i think by accident i like added a beat i added one uh uh a, an extra bar to the pattern <laughs> can hear that in in the in the actual rhythm uh with the drums and the big hits that come in you, it's, it's a different rhythmic idea here oops let me put the filter back on the synth so okay i'm just gonna play this So you're trying to figure out, you're trying to sit here, okay, where, where do I feel the, you know? That's how you kind of feel it, but the real way of thinking of this... I hear it like this, so... So I'm like screaming in the mic and don't know really where to look but uh, to me it opens up new ideas to me when you can kind of mess around a little bit with with uneven time signatures and and um, interesting rhythmic rhythmic patterns <laughs> 